Hello and welcome to my latest PC build. Today we'll be building an Intel PC for the first time. This is my Asus P8Z77-V Pro. It's my motherboard I'm going to be using. It's a socket 1155 and we have all this fun stuff that comes with it. What we see right now is four SATA 3 cables, that's SATA 6 gigabits. Even though there's no difference in the cable, they're trying to convince you you are. Our wireless adapter for the motherboard, it has a built-in wireless. Here it is, the built-in wireless. Uh, a USB and eSATA port. It's a nice add-on. Uh, NVIDIA SLI or AMD Crossfire Bridge. And of course the back panel. And all of this documentation. So we've got how to use the Wi-Fi, how to quick start. I don't think you really can quick start putting a motherboard in. And we have our lovely uh, headers for the front panel and USB. And we have yet more documentation, yet more on how to use the Wi-Fi, uh, the actual user guide for the motherboard, which is the only thing you need, and the lovely software, which we're not going to use, because we'll download the latest from the website. Here we have a new addition. This is my anti-static mat. It really smells. Very rubbery. And, well, it's an anti-static mat. Getting your motherboard out of the anti-static packaging is always a challenge, but more so with an Intel motherboard, as I've found. Unlike the AMD motherboard, they don't have a CPU mount you can happily grab. So I'm holding the North Bridge and the South Bridge, which isn't great, but what other handles do I have here? So looking at the CPU, we're going to put this in first. We have a lovely black piece of plastic shielding it. On an Intel board, the pins are on the motherboard, not the processor. What we need to do to get it off is remove this arm from underneath here. Let it slide back. Ideally we're going to remove the piece of black plastic now, but I won't. And we can see the pins. Here is our processor, the Intel i7-3770K. And it only fits in one way. So you locate your triangle and the keys and it fits. Here's what I mean by the keys. You can see in the top and the bottom you've got a little slot there and a slot there which stops the processor going in any other way but the right way. Now we're going to put this all inside the Cooler Master HAF 932 Advanced case which is an E80X size. I put the motherboard back in the anti-static packaging because I had to disassemble my old PC. The video for that will follow in a separate video. So removing all this packaging, we've got plastic, we've got cardboard, we've got all sorts from this box. And yet again, there is no handles, so make sure you're earthed. And I'm going to take it out again with the North Bridge. Which, it's not great, but there is no other handles on this motherboard. If you've ever handled an Intel motherboard, you'll know what I mean. Maybe you've got some technique for it, let me know in the comments. So at the moment I'm holding the North Bridge and a PCI slot. So we'll lower it slowly into the case. We now need to remove the old back panel, because I've forgotten to. This is for the old AMD motherboard, following in that other video. And we need to add the new one. It comes in a very unnecessary plastic bag. Even if it was loose, it would be fine. But they've put it in a plastic bag anyway. So we've got some nice padding here, keeping the motherboard safe. Make sure we don't damage it when we put it in. And you fit it by just pressing it into the slot available on your case. Now in this case it's very easy, but in cases previous this can be tricky. It depends what the case is made from and how good the materials are. Now the next step, we need to locate all the pin holes for the motherboard. So you see these little brass things? We need to line up those holes with those brass things. And it's more difficult than it sounds. Not all boards follow the same scheme. Even though my old motherboard was also an Asus, it doesn't line up completely. You can see we've got a screw missing here. So we'll add that, and then I'll add the CPU cooler, which is getting a separate video entirely because it took so long to fit it. It's the Corsair H100 water cooler, a self-contained water cooler. And we're also going to add our RAM at this point, which is 16 gig of Corsair Vengeance running at 1866 MHz. So yeah, the water cooler will follow in a separate video. I'll put the link here until the end and it's also available in the description. So once the RAM's fitted, we'll move on to the next big thing, which is our graphics card, the Gainwood NVIDIA GTX 680. You'll remember it from the previous videos. And to fit it, it's very simple. Make sure the pin is down on the PCI Express slot. This is PCI Express 3, by the way, which NVIDIA's card was designed for. 
So with this case we have screwless mounts, so we make sure it lines up with the two empty slots we need. Slot it into place on the PCI Express slot, press it down and simply press down the screw mounts. Now we need a lot of storage for a gaming PC so I'm going to give it 4 terabytes. These are two SATA 2 drives and we have a lovely 2 terabyte SATA 3 drive. Perfect. And all this is going to be powered by an Antec True Power 650 watt. I can already hear you screaming, that's not enough. You need at least 1.2 kilowatts or anything really big and really crazy. Well, according to this tool I found online, it's plenty. Here's my old PC. You can see it's running at 657 watts, meaning my power supply was going above and beyond what it was capable of. And here's the one I did for my Intel PC. You can see I'm only using 609 watts of power. So it's going to be running close to the limit, but nowhere near as close as it was with my AMD overclocked PC. That's thanks to the power efficiency with the NVIDIA GTX 680 and the new Intel Ivy Bridge processors. I'll put the link in the description where you can find this tool, but bear in mind it is individual use only. Back to the PC building, we're going to use these awesome Asus headers. I'm not sure if other manufacturers have cottoned on that these are really awesome, but Asus certainly have. So we take our power LED and we plug it in to this little thing and we end up with something looking a little like this. And once that's done, we just plug it into the motherboard. It saves so much fiddling around. We have it in front of us here. And all we have to do is put it on the right way up. Easy. Now, cable management is something I'm infamous for. I'm never really very good at it, but I've made a very solid effort with this case. What we need to do is take the power cables from our power supply and push them through to the other side of the case. Now you want to do this individually, so it doesn't get all tangled up on the other side and it keeps everything nice and neat. And what we're going to do, we're going to bring it through on the, from the other side of the case to this side of the case only where we need it. That's the trick. We don't need to have it going up past the motherboard, over the motherboard and everywhere. And you end up with something like this. Now bear in mind you're only seeing a 2D image so it looks a lot worse than it is for you. So what I've done, I've tried to stick the camera right in there so you can see. There is no airflow being blocked to any of the fans. And once we've booted up, we have our lovely EFI. And it's underclocked the RAM initially, but we can change that in the advanced mode setting. This is the basic mode. And our PC is running. So, does Windows like you switching from AMD to Intel without telling it? Well, what do you think the answer would be? Of course it's no. It throws the biggest hissy fist you'll ever see. But once it's all up and running, you've reinstalled Windows, we have some very impressive benchmarks. So you can see we're above 200, and we're even going to hit 300 there. And our old score was 19,063 on 3D Mark VI, we've now almost 30,000, with almost 10,000 on 3D Mark XI. Now that is impressive. But maybe we can push it further, automatically. There is a TPU switch on the motherboard, which overclocks it by a grand total of 3 points. So, well, it's not great, but it'll do. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.